I want to talk about this uh, new episode of Beyond Fantasy that we're releasing. It's called Hardcore, and uh, it's about this violent genre of pornography. So there's a question of, you know, why would we want to do a film on this subject matter? Obviously, it's, it's very graphic and intense and disturbing by nature. So I think for me, the first thing that I would say about that is that violent uh, pornography, whether we like it or not, is something that currently permeates our world. It has seeped into the consciousness of, uh, of a generation and um, is literally one of the most watched genres of pornography of all time. Yeah. Yeah, we see it across the board and the increasing violent nature of porn. There was a, a recent study of 4,000 porn scenes that showed between 35 and 45% of all porn has uh, scenes of extreme violence. And so this isn't a, a fringe issue. This is a, a mainstream porn issue um, that we're looking at. So we think it, it's important for people to be thoughtful about whether or not to watch this, um, to go into it with an understanding that there's a strong trigger warning, uh, but uh, to consider that the reasons for watching an episode like this are, again, to understand, first of all, that this is already out there. This genre is out there, um, that it warrants critical analysis, developing critical thinking about this very prominent form of media um, to understand the human rights issues at work behind this the, this content, um, to understand, to better understand the, the public health risks involved with this, you know, getting out to the masses. And then I think the last thing that is important to touch on, um, as we kind of introduce this film is, you know, how to process this. So, so, so you've watched this, it's, you know, very difficult, very disturbing, um, and, and then how do you, what do you do with those feelings and emotions? Yeah. So I think for me, there's three things that come to mind. The first is just grieving, uh, like giving space to say, to, to grieve, to grieve for the performers, um, whose bodies have been, who, who, you know, who have been, whose bodies have been used, uh, and acted upon in d devastating and destructive ways to create this, to, to grieve for their loss, what, what they have suffered through the creation of this content, to grieve for the people who are being exposed to this, children that are getting aligned for the first time and how that is affecting for some people their entire life. Like we've spoken with male sex buyers that talk about how it all started, you know, at a, as a young child being exposed to violent pornography. So I think grieving for them, grieving for our world, just the condition of our world where something like this has become so popular. So I think there's a place to grieve this content. Yeah. And I know it's the most disturbing film that I've ever seen. And um, there may well be a very like emotional reaction. And just to say that, um, that that's so okay to have a grieving response. That's the natural response if you feel outraged, disgusted, angry, like those are all very real human emotions when you see the suffering of others. And we have um, put so much thought and care into the, the editing process and have spent years deliberating over how to show the world what's taking place. Um, what we feel we're showing is that the very tip of the iceberg um, and um, just for people to even know that we we're in connection with several of the survivors are providing trauma therapy for them. Um, and we, we're very aware that this is an incredibly troubling and disturbing issue, but that's why we've made a film about it because we hold a s strong conviction that this is so important and we cannot shy away from actually addressing what is taking place in porn. This is too important. And so I'm just really grateful for the courage and the years of investigating this, seeing things that have, I know, broken your heart and just that conviction that you carry that we, we have to talk about this and we want people to know what's going on. Um, but 
grieving is a, a very natural response to the content and I just really encourage people after they've um, watched it to to take the time to, to let your heart be a, a little broken over what's taking place and join us in the fight to um, address this. We're wanting to see major changes and um, this film I hope will inspire a activism response of this is not okay, uh, no more, uh, we need to stop abuse and trafficking and exploitation taking place in porn. 100%, 100%. Um, okay, so given that this is uh, a form of media that you know uh, permeates the world, we felt that it was important to develop some kind of critical analysis uh, about this genre of pornography. Uh, I think that anytime you're dealing with a, an image that is um, reaching that, you know, so such vast numbers of people, it's important to provide some kind of critical analysis for that which gets into the issue of media literacy. Do we have the ability to see, interpret, and deconstruct the message behind the type of media that we're watching? Yeah. I know for us at, at Exodus Cry, where we're engaged in addressing and disrupting and ending the cycle of commercial sexual exploitation, you know, the interest in this genre is obvious. Um, we want to help provide a way for people to develop a critical lens through which to understand this media. Yeah, and I think that is so important. Um, and the way that you're presenting this issue in the form of a documentary, it is it does um, invite an inherently critical response. Um, the scenes that we're showing um, are through the lens of this is not okay. This is. Um, this is real abuse and coercion and rape and trafficking on porn sets and providing that context for people to actually see it in a way that they may have never even considered it before um, and challenging the notions that this um, that there's nothing uh, inherently abusive about this when actually abuse is at the core of what we're seeing taking place. Yeah, so people are people are going to learn about what's the message behind this genre of um, pornography. What you're mentioning gets into the third point, which is the, the human rights issue at work within this genre of pornography. So what is the impact of the creation of this content on the performers? And what's actually happening is the porn industry would suggest that this is all above board, that this is all consensual, that this is in fact some people's fantasy. They just want to be raped and degraded and assaulted. Um, and so we dig underneath that to look at the human rights issues that are at work in the porn industry um, in this uh, episode. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want to get, I don't want to give too much away to the film. I want people to actually watch it and to have to wrestle with this. I'm grateful uh, for our team of editors that spent so much time helping to craft this in a way where people wouldn't have to go be exposed to this content, um, seek out this content to understand what's being put out there. Um, you know, we tried to craft this in a way that's more palatable for a wide audience. That said, there's still a strong trigger warning with the film, but the film raises some big human rights issues and gives a whole different perspective for how to see the creation of this content where coercion is at work, other things that you mentioned. The fourth thing that I want to mention about this uh, uh, hardcore episode of Beyond Fantasy is the public health crisis aspect of this. So what is the impact of this genre of pornography on consumers? So there's this sort of cavalier notion that, well, we're not responsible for anything that happens with this content. It's just our, our fetish or whatever to create it. Um, it's the fetish of those people who are appearing in it to want to appear in it. People are making money. So whatever happens from there is, is not on us. And um, I just don't think that's a responsible way for putting this kind of content out to the public. Um, there for sure, is a public health consideration for 
how this content is getting out to the masses, who is being exposed to it and the impact of it on them. Yeah. So thinking for me, you know, of, I mean, can you imagine you're eight years old, you stumble onto a porn site and this is like your first experience with sexuality is like seeing somebody get choked out or, you know, like pseudo gang raped, uh, you know, some other like violent, I mean, it's horrifying. Extremely horrifying. And the fact that that is so common and it is, um, is one of the most easily accessible and found types of, of videos in porn. Um, and you know, age verification is a massive concern of ours wanting to protect children from accessing porn, but especially seeing the kind of um, violent content that they're being exposed to is, um, is really troubling. Okay, I wanna just uh, hit two other points with the response. So for people who are stuck in the p cycle of porn consumption or maybe are just consuming porn and haven't really thought too much about it, um, I think my part of my hope for this film is it will cause people to stop watching pornography um, and to stop fueling this genre of pornography through their consumption. Uh, we can vote for the kind of world we want to live in through our own actions. Do we want a world that is literally flooded with images of women being sexually assaulted and degraded and dehumanized and humiliated? I mean, it's, it's, it's horrific. And so I think that would be part of the hope. And then the last thing is just that people would take action. Uh, we need more people to um, who are stirred in their convictions to rise up and join us in this effort to hold the predatory porn industry accountable and to stop genres like this from destroying real human lives. And so um, I like something that uh, a, a photographer from National Geographic said one time, he said, you're either an activist or an inactivist. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to see more people activated into this cause um, to use their own voice, time, money, resources, etc., to help make a difference, um, to eradicate this genre of pornography from our world. I would love to see the images of, you know, these kind of images completely expunged from our world. So beyondfantasy.com is where all three of those episodes are housed and it has an open letter from survivors and a petition calling for change. So I really encourage people after they've watched the episode to um, just spend some time looking on the website and find out the ways that they can um, get activated and get involved with what we're trying to do. Absolutely. It's not a popcorn and Coke type of film. You approach something like this with the expectation to learn something um, and to uh, to really grapple with something that is affecting our world in a dramatic way. And so again, trigger warning. Um, Major but, trigger warning. Yeah.